Thank you, Leslie. Uh, you know, Leslie obviously is a member of the National Brexit Committee now, which is a group of uh, it's a pan nationalist Republican and human rights organizations that are considering how Ireland is going to be affected by Brexit. Uh, I'm the national director of the Asian Order of Hibernians for this area, and I'm also the national immigration chair. And uh, today is a today is a very sad day for us because we're remembering the tragic murder and yet to be vindicated murder of Pat Finucane. Uh, assembled here every year are representatives not only the Ancient Order of Hibernians but the Brayhawn Law Society. Very good to see Mary Elizabeth here and other members of the Brayhawn Law Society. American Unity Conference, the Hibernians, and people that are concerned with not only peace and justice in the north of Ireland, but also peace and justice in all sectors, in all sectors. So we're, we're here to commemorate Pat, and I, I think the father, Brian Jordan, did a wonderful job today. I also think that he, uh, he, he was very timely because uh, he, all, he made us stay after Mass and pray, do a little prayer for him. St. Anthony, anybody's ever lost anything, that was your opportunity. <laughs> but we've lost some things, we've lost some great people, today we lost another one, Mark McGinnis. But thank God, the New York, Irish, nationalist, Republican, and social justice community, we're all still here. I look at many of you, we're graced with the, the presence of a great friend of ours, who inspired a lot of our commemorations last year, is continuing in his work, Dr. Ruan O'Donnell. <laughs> Martin Galvin will elaborate later on an event that I think that you'd all like to participate in uh, next month. Um, I, uh, I tell you, many of us here have traveled together to Ireland to be. Uh, sorry? Uh, well, the exception of one notable exception. Um, and, and that's some of our work, too, to make sure that someday that can happen as well. But our trips for the Good Friday Agreement, our trips for the, uh, um, the families of uh, Bloody Sunday, and now sustaining the Good Friday Agreement are more important than ever. Uh, we're very fortunate today that a representative of the Sanukin family, somebody that is the epitome of social justice. This man is an attorney who defended the, defe the undefendable. We all remember the five young people that were accused of a heinous crime in Central Park. And we all remember how terrible we felt for that young lady, young victim. But there was something there was something about how those boys were put in prison. There was something about it that stuck in people's cause. And thank God we have people in this country that don't just care about their own culture, their own race, and their own faith. Thank God we have people like John Moore, a friend of the Philippines, and I introduce him to See, John, John was the person that actually vindicated the five young men. And uh, I, I just want to say I pray for the parents that didn't get to see that, just much like Jerry Conlon's father, Giuseppe Conlon. You know, John, please, thank you. Thank you very much. As, as many of you may know, I was a friend of Pat I As a young lawyer, we met and uh, became fast friends. We met in 1981 during the hunger strike in Belfast. And uh, I remember many days going back and forth down the roads in Belfast with uh, Patrick and uh, got to know his family and have been close to the family all these years. Um, it's, it's hard to believe that it's been 28 years since he was uh, struck down. In fact, today was, was actually his birthday. Uh, he'd, been, he'd be 68 years old today. Uh, to, to think that he was struck down at age 40 when he had achieved so much already uh, is really uh, hard to believe and a terrible, terrible uh, thing to, to have to deal with. Anyway, I talked to Gerald today who uh, would have wanted to be here but was unable to, uh, unable to come to the United States this year. She was 
Forty. Not looking forward to St. Patrick's Day at the White House, so <laughs> we get it. she uh, managed to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. um, but she did want to say, uh, one, she wanted to say, remind us about how much a loss uh, Mark McGinnis is, uh, the loss of Mark McGinnis is, so, uh, the cause of Irish freedom. And uh, she wanted to uh, just give a short update about their, their struggle to get it at, at some point, finally, a free and fair inquiry into the, the death of Patrick and the collusion between the British and the, uh, and the uh, paramilitaries in, in the North. Um, unfortunately, after 28 years, they have not achieved justice. They just heard that their appeal of the denial of the inquiry was turned down, so they are now appealing to the next level. But the one thing I know about uh, Geraldine and about her, her children, Michael and John and Catherine, is that they will never give up. And it's because of people like you and the support they get from the folks here and in Ireland that makes them uh, never give up. And always, uh, always, and, and folks like Leslie who never let us forget the importance of uh, the truth about what happened at Patrick King and the importance of uh, fighting for that. So she wanted to convey that. Uh, and to uh, wish everybody the best. So thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead, Leslie. Uh, so then, uh, I'm going to present our main speaker, Martin Galvin, who everybody knows, I'm sure, and has been an activist in my career since the 70s. You know, he's a rabble rabble. <laughs> I have a couple of quick points. Number one, every year, Leslie begins working on this. She is the one who puts it together. This, I think, is an important event for the reasons I'll talk about. And the person who's responsible for putting it together, for having it, that comfort to the Manuka family, that reminded the British that we are still here watching, demanding justice, goes to Leslie, and I just want you to join me. Secondly, I was asked to mention a couple of people who were not here. One, somebody who came to most years, who despite the fact he was a New York City policeman, was shot, paralyzed, they gave the person who shot him, was an advocate not only for justice for everybody, but particularly for an advocate for the Irish. He was in protest, he was at Solidarity Day, and he certainly would have been at this event almost every year. And that is Stephen McDonald who passed away during the Uh, thirdly, I just want to join um, in expressing sadness and condolence and everybody's sorrow about Martin McGinnis. Uh, I got to know him uh, in the early 70s. I met him in Dublin. I met him in the Northern Aid Office. I, I think I was told on the BBC there's pictures of me, he and I carrying a coffin in Derry. Um, obviously, there were times we had political differences. That's politics. He's certainly somebody who anyone who's a Republican or knew him would have a lot of regard for, a lot of respect for. We certainly miss him. We want to express that condolence even from this distance to his family. I know you all join me in doing that. And lastly, uh, I wasn't going to mention it, um, but I know Mary Elizabeth's telling everybody not to go. And it's not worth the trip. But we are sponsoring. Rowan O'Donnell was here last year. He was in Manhattan. And he said, someday, I want to make it really up to the Bronx in Woodlawn, right near where Colonel Kelly, one of the Fenians from 1867, who was rescued, is buried. And he's going to be hosted in the Bronx on April 19th, a few days after Easter. There are flyers here. There are seats available. There'll be tickets. It's something we really want to have. People don't realize about the contribution that was made in America by Irish, the Irish of that generation, the Irish of every generation, how much Ireland owes it. We didn't maybe play the leading role, but certainly America always played a leading role. And those patriots in 1867, that whole generation, must be remembered. It's up to us to make sure they're remembered and take the lessons for today that, that follow us as we continue to work for freedom for all Ireland. So despite what Mary Elizabeth says, please go and see Dr. Paul O'Donnell on April 19th. And you can listen to Radio Free Aaron every week and we'll, we'll 
plug in as much as I can. Okay. Why are we here? Why is it important for us to be here? Why is it so important that Leslie would put so much work into bringing us here? Pat Finucane was, said, a civil rights lawyer. Solicitor, something different in Ireland is uh, what he was as a young man from Belfast who went into British courts at a time when these courts were a joke. When the British could no longer practice internment without charge or trial, when there was too much publicity, when there was too much pressure, particularly from some people around here, from people in the United States, they decided to do away with that. They said, ha-ha, we'll have these dip-lock courts, and we'll deny them a right to a jury, and we'll have orange judges who are going to be against nationalists and Republicans to begin with. And we'll make sure that if you have a confession, that that can be used. And 80 percent of the convictions at one time against Republicans were based on confessions that were beaten out of the McCaskill barracks. So in that system, that impossible, almost impossible system, where many lawyers would go in and find or feel they had no hope of justice, Hack Finucane was different. He went in. He defended people like Bobby Sand. He defended others. And you could see, I, I worked with him one time on a case. I had him, he defended somebody who was arrested in conjunction with the Northern Aid Tour. He went into one place, and he was preparing a bail application. I said, do you think you'll get bail? And he just laughed, not a hope from that orange bigot. But we're going to prepare such a good record that we'll go to the high court right after it, and I'll get him out. That was the sort of sense of humor that he had. That was the sort of determination. That was the sort of quiet confidence. And people that he represented would say, we may not win, but we're definitely going to get a fight. And sometimes he did win. And sometimes he did embarrass the OIUC, the constabulary members who would testify and perjure themselves against him. And he would embarrass the judges who would want to rule against him and would often find they could not. And it became so bad that clients of his, when they would ask for it, people would be arrested. Nationalists would ask, I want Pat Finucane. They started to be told by the RUC, oh, don't get him. He won't be around. He won't be alive to finish your case. A British minister, Douglas Hart, and maybe pronounced, mispronouncing his name, but I'm always going to call him Douglas Hart, because for me, that's what he is. He stood up in Westminster under privilege and talked about people who are unduly sympathetic and involved with the IRA, and he met Pat Finucane. Loyalists got information about him, and we found out later that a British agent, Brian Nelson, would prepare guns, and other British nations would ship the guns, that they would prepare the intelligence, that they would sit there and get together and plan and collude and organize the assassination, his assassination, on February 12th in 1989. Pat Finucane, I should mention, wasn't just somebody who fought for justice in Ireland. And that wasn't the only place that he fought for justice where he was killed. One of our friends, and we're hoping that uh, we have somebody else in this category who's allowed to stay here full time. One of our friends, Sean Mackett is here, was recently a Grand Marshal, because Pat Finucchi came and testified and explained what British rule represents in a way that got him asylum and got him a grant to stay here. He was actually due to come to the United States for Gabe McGainy on a few days after the day we would eventually be killed. And it had to be postponed because he was arguing another case in the Court of Appeal. That's why Pat Finucchi was targeted, because he defended people, because he went into the courts and he fought. All right, after that happened, the Breton Law Society did something because the New York Times wouldn't cover it. We always, Northern Aid had all, usually had the demonstrations. The Breton Law Society had one against the New York Times for failing to cover it. I went down to Washington, I met with Congressman Biaggi and others and told them what had happened. They signed a letter and they protested. And um, Congressman Biaggi called me afterwards and he laughed. He had a great sense of humor. He did this great imitation of the British ambassador saying that Martin Galvin is a scurrilous individual telling terrible lies about the British government. And they would never, Her Majesty's government, would never dirty its hands working with loyalist criminals to kill a lawyer like Pat Finucane. And Mario Biaggi laughed, and it was a joke because he knew what had happened, and he only didn't know how much, how much they were involved in this collusion murder. All right. Because of the Panookan family, because of everybody, people like this event, because of everybody who fought for justice, a lot of the truth has come to light. We know about the role of Brian Nelson. We know about William Stobie bringing the weapons there to the killers. We know about who was tipped off. We know how they set up the house. They know about the intelligence. We know they murdered him. 
And there was even a De Silva review, which showed how much the extent of loyalist collusion with the British. How the British stopped at some point from murdering themselves. They just would have loyalists would do it. Men say, we only uh, are responsible for 10% of the death. They're not responsible for the deaths by their hired killers, where they gave the arms, where they gave the intelligence, where they made sure that those hired killers would have a safe route, couldn't be interrupted then and back, despite the information that they had. Right. We've come a long way. We're 28 years down. And still, the Fanukin family is fighting for justice. And still, a lot of families are fighting for justice. Because one of the things about Pat Fanukin and the courage of his family, they opened up the whole issue of collusion in a way that was once not accepted, but is now to know. In a way that a lot of other families have demanded and fought for input. And these inquests are not there because the Irish are over sentimental and they like being in inquest or they like being in British court. They're there because these families, like Pat Fanuke, were murdered. Excuses and lies were told about these murders. And this is something that those families will tolerate and won't accept. And they will fight for justice. And we're standing here because we support that fight. So today, as we're here, I know there's a few of us. I know many of us have been here over and over again. We're here for an important reason. We're here because the British should not be allowed to get away with murder as they long thought they had. We're here because we don't want them to get away with impunity. We're here because British rule in Ireland always, has always, will depend on injustice and murder, especially in front of its own courts. And we are not going to let them lie and get away with it. We are not going to let them lie about Pat Finucan, about all of those other families. So today, I want to compliment and commend everyone who came out. Every one of you who's fought for justice, who's fought for truth, who's in organizations like the AOH, like the other organizations here, who supports organizations like Relatives for Justice and the other organizations in Ireland back there who fight for truth. This is one of the critical issues now that they say is going to be resolved. I don't trust the British. I don't trust James Brogan Charlie. I think now is a time that we in America Ronald O'Donnell's going to talk about the leading role that America always played, whether it's 1867 in the Phoenix, whether it was 1960, whether it was 1969 through 1998. Now more than ever, we through our organizations got to get back on top of it, put pressure on the British, have the things that we're entitled to, truth for those families, and most important, freedom from the British state that would do this to us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. About three hundred and fifty dollars of remaining expenses for this event. So I think we can pass around the hat and maybe uh, lighten her burden. I once saw Jesse Jackson raise ten thousand dollars in five minutes. Rob <laughs> 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 a bank? I know Jesse Jackson. Is that going to be Whatever. And by the way, thank you to Joe and Malachi for their wonderful hospitality. Just like Brother Olani, who is being honored very shortly, uh, this has become a forum for these kind of events. So certainly, I think we are very, very grateful to have And I'd like to thank one of our greatest presidents, Abraham Lincoln, for attending. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can't thank you enough for your contributions to the war effort. We couldn't have made it without you, without the Irish. That's right.